My name is Average Joe, and I'm a proud geek with expertise in movies, superheroes, and animation. My name is Beef Pork Ribs. I'm a fine repository of esoteric knowledge, which I suppose most people would qualify as geeky. Though I dabble in many fandoms, my main areas of expertise are anime, movies, and Belgian comics, with a strong recent insurgency of D&D. Our mission is to bring nerd and geek culture to the masses. By sticking it all under the microscope. Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the Bat Jar, Jar Podcast. Podcast. Movies, comics, graphic novels, TV, cartoons, animation, nerds, their geeks, entertainment, culture. Here it on the Bat Jar, nerdy power, nerds and geeks, come gather around the scene. Come and join us in the Bat Jar. Come and tune in to Average Show and his team. Lots of here in the Bat Jar. When the newest nerdy news drops, these caught us pals, put it under the scope. DC, Marvel, Disney, Star Wars, cinematic, multiverse. Hello there, and welcome to the Bat Jar Podcast, where we put nerd and geek culture under the microscope. Yes, we do. Ben the Movie Buff, you are back once again. I've noticed listening to older episodes where you're on, for some reason, I feel the need to like call you Ben the Movie Buff every time I say your name. Like It's just not enough to call you Ben, and I don't know what's wrong with me. No, that, that, that's okay. I mean, whatever, whatever you want to call me. But uh, yes, <laughs> as always, it's uh, a blast to be here. It's nice to... Yeah, like last week was a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to tonight. And uh, yeah, call me whatever you want. Just don't call me late for dinner because I'm rarely late for anything. There you go. So I'm going to be trying to get more comfy just calling you Ben. I know you're a movie buff. I don't have to assert that every single time I refer to you. It's all good. (laughs) Uh, Today we're talking about the movie Free Guy. Mm -hmm. But I thought it'd be interesting to get your opinion on this new thing that's happening with Canadian movie theaters. Okay. Not sure if you're aware of this thing called like the Cine Club that Cineplex oh, is starting. Yep. Okay, so I'd, I I I'll, I I I want to hear your take. Do you think this is a good idea or not? Okay, so and keep in mind I'm I'm going off of cuz I did see an advertisement for this before Free Guy. So correct me if I'm wrong here, but from my understanding, it's almost like you join this club which I think you have to pay for. But yes. by, by paying for it, like you'll get extra benefits. I'm assuming like more scene points and like lots of extra stuff that you obviously wouldn't get if you were not in the club. Um, I am taking a wild guess that they're, they're doing this because they probably need the extra money. The amount of times like theaters have had to shut down, especially Canadian theaters and Ontario theaters in the last um, five or six months. Um, yeah, I, I think I would need to know a little bit more about it, or especially like from other people that have, have gone through it to make more of an informed decision. But uh, I'd like to think it's a pretty cool idea, and hopefully it will be something that kind of, uh, I don't know, kind of gives people more of a reason to go back to theaters. Because literally about 28 hours ago, we installed my new 4K TV, which for the record is just the most amazing thing ever. And thank you, Joe, for, uh, Average Joe, for kind of helping out with that. I appreciate that. But um, the bigger the TV you have in your home and these more of these premium video on demands that you can do, the less reason there is to go to the movies to see, um, go to the go to the movies right and even like with my son if my wife and i want to go see a movie like we have to organize babysitter and make sure they're able to, to stay later and this and that so we can go and then come back so in some ways it's more it's obviously more convenient for us to just stay here so i think doing the whole movie club thing that cineplex is doing makes sense i would just be curious to see like i caught the gist of that advertisement but uh, it would be interesting to see once it gets going whether people actually uh, uh, get into it or not. I think I could find myself getting into something like that. But uh, uh, yeah, I am I am curious because uh, I know other smaller movie theaters, like I think the, the Mayfair and Rest in Peace Bytown Cinema um, used to have kind of a similar thing, a bit more contained, where like if you're a member, you got movies for cheaper and there would be like um, special screenings where you wouldn't know what the movie is unless you were a member and you could go to that, but no one else could. Um, so things like that, I thought were actually kind of cool. And I just never got around to actually being a part of that, but, uh, yeah, I hope Cineplex has some fun stuff up their sleeve. Well, I'm surprised they haven't tried something like this sooner because from my understanding, a lot of the American theater chains have tried different membership things before. Like, I think there was one from AMC called like movie pass where you could see as many movies as you wanted in a month, as long as you're paying the 
subscription fee, which I think they had to like dial back because people were taking advantage of it. Yeah. And, and, and I, yeah, that's what I thought of too. Cause I, I watched a few interviews about like the guy who founded movie pass and it did seem like a really cool idea. It's just kind of unfortunate that I think it was only founded a couple years ago. And I think it was struggling maybe just in general, because it seems to me that yes, there are some people that would go see, go to the movies a lot and be able to take advantage of this. But I think some people that didn't go enough would be like paying for it every month and maybe they were busy and they didn't have time to go to the movies. So yeah, it's that whole like, oh, why am I paying a membership to the gym if I'm not going to the gym, right? So I think for people that do go to the movies a lot, like myself, I could see myself getting good use out of it. Um, I think I think that works, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, I guess it wasn't meant to be because I think, I don't think movie passes. I think, yeah, I think it anymore. died. Yeah. Oh, Even wow. before the pandemic got started, I think it was dying. But yeah. I got an email about this Cine Club thing and I just sort of bit the bullet. I'm like, whatever, let's try it. Because- <laughs> Nice. After tax, it's like $11 a month. Oh, nice. Okay. And the first thing they mark is like, oh, you get a free movie ticket every month. And I'm like, well, you're paying 11 bucks. Like you're not really, like you're essentially paying for a movie ticket. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) So so I was like, okay, if anything, signing up for this, like, and and there's no, like, you don't have to sign up for a year or anything. It's kind of like you can cancel it whenever you want. I was like, well, what's the worst that could happen? Like realistically, if movie theaters stay open, which I hope they do, I'll be... I've like, since they opened like four weeks ago, I've seen a, a movie four times. Like I've been going almost every week. So yeah, I've been twice. So yeah, I've been getting back um, into it as well. So I was like, well, at the very least, like I'll at least pay for a movie ticket every month is basically what I'm paying for. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then on top of that, you get 20% off of the concessions when cool. you're part of this club, which is mm-hmm. a nice thing considering how expensive concessions are. Yeah. And the big loophole, of course, with movie going these days in Ontario is that you have to be wearing a mask unless you're yeah. eating or drinking. So if you have a big thing of popcorn and a drink, like here, you can basically just constantly very slowly be eating exactly. something. Yeah. Um, that's the loophole at least I've discovered. Exactly. So I've basically yeah. like had to buy concessions every time I've gone. I don't usually like buy theater concessions unless yeah. it's like a special occasion, but it's mm-hmm. become a necessity because I just have a hard time wearing a mask for hours on end. Yeah. But then on top of the 20% off concessions and the basically paying for movie ticket, you also get a discounted member rate for tickets you're buying for friends. You can buy up to tickets like the reduced rate of $10 a piece, which general admission for a Cineplex movie is generally between $12 and $15, depending on the theater you're going to. So that's a pretty good deal. And especially these days, like you got to kind of plan in advance who you're going with because you got to buy enough seats to keep the distance. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know. I bought it yesterday and I used it today. Got my friend a cheaper ticket. My ticket was technically free, even mm-hmm. though I paid 11 bucks for it yesterday, which is still less than I would have paid if I just bought a ticket. Yeah. So, so far it's going well for me, but we'll see realistically if I end up uh, spending more money than I would otherwise. In in a month from now, like in mid September, we should uh, kind of circle back to this and see how you how you enjoyed it and like what it was actually like being in it for for a bit because i'd be curious to hear your thoughts yeah the one piece of the contract i couldn't make clear of is that it tells me i have the one free ticket and that every time i see a movie i can get up to two tickets at the discounted price Mm -hmm. what i'm not clear about is that once i've used my free ticket am i allowed to buy those discounted ticket rates for myself like if i were to go see a second movie oh okay because if that's the case, that's great. Because then I'm basically yeah. like always paying less uh, for movies than I would otherwise. Yeah, and I, and I would like to think that's kind of the way that that's how you would hook people in, right? If it's like, hey, do you find yourself going to the theaters a lot? If you if you are saving on average three to four dollars per ticket and you're going every week, every other week, it does add up. So, but yeah, I, I guess I guess you'll find out soon enough, right? How how that that works exactly? So that'll be pretty cool. So yeah, stay tuned as we check in on whether Cineplex's uh, Mm -hmm. movie club was a waste of my money or not. (laughs) Hopefully not though. (laughs) But speaking about movies, Mm -hmm. it's you you commented on this movie theaters were shut down for a long time because of the pandemic, Mm -hmm. even longer in Ontario where we live. Yeah. And I've heard through social media and through YouTube, like people saying that their movie theater audiences are ruder now than they ever have been. (laughs) Uh, and I know you and I have talked before about our complaints about the movie going experience and like people being on their phones and stuff. Yep. 
I have to say, like, I've been to the movies, like I said, four times since they most recently reopened, Mm -hmm. and then a handful of times since the pandemic started. I personally don't feel like movie theater, like, audiences are all that much ruder than they were before, but I was curious, like, for the times you've been, have you noticed, like, an uptick in inappropriate or not not kosher behavior? So, for me, there's two things to take in mind here. The first one is that I think, like, I'm trying to remember the last time I went to go see a movie where in the auditorium there were like at least a hundred people, maybe more. And if I had to guess, it might be something like rise of Skywalker in 1917 might've had like the most people in the theater um, to a showing that I was going to. Right. And it seems to me that the more people there are in the theater, depending on the movie that can increase the chance of there being a few rowdy teenagers, a few people who don't care, but are there any ways? So they want to be on their phone um, it, it seems to me like a lot of the times when I've had to deal with uh, rude moviegoers, it's when there are more people, not always, but I, I think that's kind of one thing. So for me, the three times I've gone to see movies in the last four or five months, I haven't really dealt that um, that much with rude uh, moviegoers because even something like Free Guy, which had a fair amount of people, I would guess probably 40 or 50 people in my auditorium because of all the social distancing you can't fill that theater up and it's the recliner chairs which also take up more space so this auditorium i would guess you could probably only fit maybe a hundred people in like you could not fit 300 people in here because the seats are too big um yeah i'm trying what was the other thing i was going to say anyways uh, yeah i i don't think they're any more rude than they were uh before i i would even hope that maybe with all these premium video on demand things going on that I'd like to believe that people that now have the option to stay home, if they want to be on their phone, if they want to comment through the movie, now they have the opportunity to do that and just stay at home as opposed to going out to the theaters uh, to do that. I I hope that would um, kind of, uh, I guess, as you say, kind of um, shoot, what's the term kind of uh, weed out the people that maybe didn't really want to see it in the theater and now they can just see it at home. So to be honest, I haven't noticed a huge difference. And I think part of that is just because like, when's the next time I'm going to be in a theater where there's 150 people or more? I, you know, at least a couple of years. So I, yeah, in fact, if anything, I think it's improved a little bit because I haven't gone to the theaters as often. You can't have as many people in there. And now people have the option to watch stuff at home. The other time is any to plug your YouTube channel and the episode you did where you talked about movie theater etiquette. So if you haven't already watched it, go find Ben the Movie Buffs video on movie theater etiquette. It is excellent. It is everything you should do <laughs> when you go to. The- they should play that in the theaters yes, before a movie you. starts. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, it reminds me of I think it's the Alamo Draft House in the United States somewhere that they will typically have some sort of PSAs at the beginning where it'll be sometimes if they can get the celebrity of the movie, like the celebrity that's in the movie they're about to watch to basically um, tell people like, Hey, you on your phone, put your phone away, watch the movie, this and that to just remind people like, please cut it out. Just sit down, watch the movie. Like it's not, not that complicated, but yes, thank you for bringing that, that uh, up again, average show. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I like to think there are some fair points raised in there. So we're here today to talk about free guy, which Mm -hmm. is a new movie released by what is now called 20th Century Studios. Yeah, that's right. Huh? I noticed that logo looking a bit different at the beginning of the movie. Oh, man, that's so weird. Because everyone now knows that what was 20th Century Fox has been purchased by Disney. So this yeah. is one of the first movies to be released under this new kind of banner with yeah. them being part of the Disney family. And that's right. we'll talk about it in spoilers, but there's certainly <laughs> specific things that happen that are a benefit to this movie because yeah. they're owned by Disney now. Exactly. But we we had an episode earlier this year about video game movies and how, on the whole, they're pretty bad. Yeah. But we agreed in that episode that seemingly the movies that are about video games without trying to adapt the story of a specific video game seem to be better than the ones that are trying to adapt a specific game. Yes. And, And if I may add quickly, like Ready Player One is a movie that I absolutely love that definitely feels like a video game because ultimately the oasis is this big digital playground but then i also got to give a special shout out to edge of tomorrow someone made a good point saying like this is a movie that's not based on a video game but kind of reminds you of a video game because of the fact that you know you start at the beginning of the game and you get as far as you can and then when tom cruise dies 
he has to start back over and learn how to do things correctly to keep on moving forward. So I, I got to mention those are two nods of, of movies that are not based on specific video games, but I think are very, in a way, video game, uh, good video game movies. And, and in recent years, Detective Pikachu, yep. Sonic the Hedgehog, yes, Sonic Mortal Street. Kombat, like yeah. there's the Monster Hunter movie came out and that wasn't very good. But, yeah. So we're, we're kind of on the rise with video game movies being not terrible. Yeah. And I think Free Guy as we're going to get into here is definitely another example of a movie that is video game inspired. Yes. Without trying to adapt a specific video game. Absolutely. Now this film's had its release date changed four times, which is kind of unfortunately become standard in this era of the pandemic. I remember seeing a trailer for the, this movie for the first time, like fall 2019 yeah, and it was announcing right, a summer 2020 release date, which haha <laughs> yeah that didn't happen <laughs> yeah uh its release date was moved to december 2020 and then there was going to be built as like oh it's going to be a christmas movie it's going to come yeah. out in theaters at christmas and and uh, that didn't happen nope and then it was moved to may 2021 it was like okay well now it's going to be a like a may long weekend movie yeah. and yeah, then summer movie that didn't happen and it got landed with this release date of august 13th and i'm you know, there was even question if it was going to meet this release date because there were, as the summer was kind of trucking along, movies weren't doing super well. And they were like, maybe they'll do a dual Disney plus and theater release for free guy. Yeah. Or maybe they'll push the release of it even farther. Mm -hmm. uh, so were you surprised that it actually did come out in August, 2021? Um, not terribly surprised, e even though from what I hear, like I haven't been keeping up as much with COVID updates, like outside of Ontario, like I hear, apparently the Delta variant is uh, is kind of taking its number, taking its toll on on people of the U.S. But but I do think we're kind of at the point where, like a couple months ago, like movies, like especially Godzilla versus Kong, I think was kind of the first example of, hey, here's a movie that's coming out still technically during the pandemic, but like people still went to go see it because they wanted to see it on the big screen. And I'd like to think that as more blockbuster movies came out, even though free guy was supposed to come out in may and then got pushed to august i feel like we're kind of at the point where like enough big movies that were delayed have finally been coming out and i think they kind of laid the framework the foundation if you will to say that we're putting these movies out they might not be making an amazing amount of money but they are making some money right it's not like every single one comes out and is it one bomb after the next <laughs> if that was the case i can understand um free guy being like yeah let's push that even farther because we need to wait until it's safe um, so not terribly surprised. I, I think once we saw enough summer releases like Cruella, A Quiet Place 2, uh, F9, I think when, with those movies making a good amount of money, I think they were probably safe enough to feel like Free Guy's got to do some good with all these other movies breaking in some money, if not the best amount. Did you see the uh, trailer reaction for Free Guy that had Deadpool and Korg <sighs> in it? I oddly enough like I saw the first 15 20 seconds and I'm like oh this looks good and then I, I was probably watching it at work and I probably got interrupted by something but I, I remember like Deadpool fumbling with a light and then he drops it and he crashes on the ground and I was like oh this looks like fun but uh, yeah I will have to watch that because I'm sure it's hilarious it was just shocking it's like there's Deadpool sitting next to a character from the MCU yeah and they're promoting a Fox movie yeah which and you just start to see the wheels turning of like oh yeah like this is all part of the same corporate family now and exactly uh this is certainly the first indication that deadpool will be an mcu projects in the future so uh -huh. can't wait to see that happen and if i remember correctly i think taika watiti does the voice of core is that he another does, little yes. yeah kind of connection there of like oh ryan reynolds plays deadpool uh taika watiti does the voice of Korg, and they're both in free guy see the connections it's like oh, okay yeah i see where you're going here <laughs> yeah and ryan reynolds is one of the producers of, of free That's guy right. so he's yep. he's putting his own money into this so yeah. i don't know who he had asked permission for to say hey can i use these characters to promote this other movie mm-hmm but it'd be kind of cool if in the future we get to see like more, I don't know, like Anna and Elsa plugging a different movie or whatever. Maybe I'm a mad, yeah. maybe it's just a Deadpool thing because he's Mr. Break the Fourth Wall. But yeah, I mean, if, if I've learned anything in the last five or six years, basically since uh, Wreck-It Ralph came out in 2012 and Lego Movie came out in 2014, is that like crossovers are fun. I think it's so much fun to like just to even talk about a scenario where it's like, oh, 
the fictional characters Deadpool and Korg get together and watch and do a reaction of Free Guy. It, it's like, who could have predicted two or three years ago that something like this would happen? Like, I, I think it's just fun to put them together and see what happens. And even if it doesn't work out, it's still cool to see them try. So yes, I'd love to see, I, I just, I can't wait to see Deadpool in the MCU. I think that's going to be so fun, him having to abide by PG-13 rules. I feel like you could just crack so many jokes uh, with that. So yes, I think crossovers are awesome. They make a joke in that reaction that, oh, I thought this movie came out already. <laughs> and I think that's the feeling of a lot of people. Like, it's kind of hard to, you, you we're used to it now, but it's like going through promotional campaigns multiple mm-hmm. times for the same movie. Yeah, You do kind of get that sense like, oh yeah, I feel like I've seen so much of this movie already. And exactly, yeah. of course, they don't want to just put the same trailer out again. So I feel like there's been so many trailers and clips from this movie that have kind of shown you different parts of it. So yep. hopefully... If you're going to see the movie, you haven't been spoiled for the entire thing. Yes. I intentionally, like, I watched the first trailer, and I think I saw the second one. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, I don't want to watch it anymore, because I feel like I've seen the whole movie by the time I see all these different trailers. Yeah. Like, I feel like I've seen No Time to Die already, because they've can't, they've promoted that movie, like, three or four times already. And we got to hear the theme song. That's the other strange thing, too, is that they literally released the theme song, I think, a couple weeks before they postponed no time to die the first time around so yeah in a way like you, we've probably seen a decent amount of clips from the movie and we've heard the song so yeah i think a, a fair amount of it will feel familiar when we actually get to sit down and watch the movie but with free guy did like were you in that camp did you feel like this movie had already come out or were you like kind of looking forward to it uh, I wasn't looking forward to it. I, I, I didn't feel like it had come out because, like you said, I think I saw the first trailer when it came out um, uh, at the end of 2019, or maybe I saw the trailer a few months later uh, in early 2020, maybe in front of something like Sonic, which would make sense because, like, you know, showing off like-minded movies right before the movie you're about to watch. Um, so, yeah, I didn't feel like the, the movie had already come out, and I think I just kind of heard about it a little more when it was confirmed that, oh, yeah, it's definitely coming out in August and seeing a little more uh, promotional material. So I, I think I was just kind of at the point where you hear about a movie for so long, and then it's like, wow, now we're finally here. After all the delays, we finally get to sit down and see it happen, because that's unfortunately the boat that a lot of other movies were in, right? Quiet Place 2 had a uh, preview screening. Some people already saw the movie right before they decided to uh, halt the delay. Or, sorry, halt the release. So um, yeah, yeah, that's how I feel about it. I've complained a couple times here that they're still trying to push this King's Man, Kingsman oh, prequel. Are they ever? And I'm, it was so apparent, like they had a trailer for it that was also intercut with like footage from the first two yep. Kingsman movies and interviews with the cast and directors. I'm like, this movie was supposed to come out in November 2019. That was the original <laughs> release date of the Kingsman. And now it's set to come out like January 2022. Yeah. I seriously think they should just dump this movie on Disney plus. I don't think anyone's interested in a Kingsman prequel, maybe a sequel, maybe a Kingsman three, but certainly not a prequel. Yeah. Yeah. I think the difficulty is on top of the amount of times it's been delayed on top of like, I feel like I've seen four trailers for that movie. I think, yeah. And I think that's why this most recent trailer is like, see, look at these characters that you've seen before in previous Kingsman movies. Guess what? None of them are going to be in this prequel. I mean, they might have a brief scene to be like, "Oh, the Kingsman." Let me tell you about the origin <laughs> story, and then and then we go back to the um, to the origin story with uh, Ray Fiennes and Jimon Hansu and, and other characters. But uh, yeah, I, I think this one's in real danger. I I think the hardcore fans will go and see it. But if I remember correctly, I think the first one did pretty well financially. The second one didn't do as well as the first. Not much of a surprise there. So this prequel that that's coming out, what four years after the Golden Circle. I think it's in a bit of trouble. Anyway, I'm sorry. I keep getting distracted here. <laughs> That's okay. When we talked about Free Guy and movies coming out this year, Beef Pork Ribs was concerned that the movie was already going to be passe because he said, like, the movie, the games they're referencing, like Grand Theft Auto and mm-hmm. Fortnite, have kind of already had their peaks. Right. And so his opinion was that the farther they delay this, the more dated those references are going to be. Mm hmm. And those are certainly, I don't know video games very well, but those are certainly the two video games they kind of reference the most in terms of the world that they're in. Yeah. Uh, and some for somebody who's not a gamer like me, I, you know, I'm glad they didn't delay it any farther, mm-hmm. but the references certainly like didn't, I didn't feel like they were dated because I didn't really understand the video game, the main video game references. Yeah, I'm sure there's some deeper stuff that I probably missed. 
but I feel like there are some pretty obvious ones that we've at the very least heard about or seen clips of. Cause like, I'll be honest, I have never played Fortnite, but I'm still kind of familiar with the kind of game that Fortnite is. I'm familiar that like in Fortnite, there's various dances you can do like the flossing dance. And I believe they do that in free guy. So yeah, I'd like to think there's still a good amount of video game references that I did understand. Um, especially like as a Nintendo fan, cause I don't play that many first person shooters but as a Nintendo fan, I think there are a number of things that that uh, caught my attention. So some of them might be a little dated, but I, I think um, I think it goes to show why you know Ready Player One has a lot. I mean, and to be fair, that's a movie about the '80s, but there's still lots of old references in a movie like that. And I think in even though some of these references may be outdated, I think there's a better chance that more people might actually know of them. If you're referencing something that's only a year or two old, you might have a certain group of it being familiar. But then a lot of other people who haven't gotten there yet or haven't heard those references will have no idea. So I don't think necessarily dated references are a bad thing, to be honest. So this movie was number one at the box office, Mm -hmm. dethroning The Suicide Squad, which fell to like fourth place. And it just breaks my heart. That movie's definitely not picking up any legs. Nope. But it's good news for Free Guy. It debuted at number one, made more money than Suicide Squad. The Suicide Squad (laughs) made last weekend. Yep. Uh, why don't you uh, get us started here? Give us the Blu-ray sure. case description for what is Free Guy. My name is Guy. I thought I had everything I needed. But then I met her. Put these on. Oh my God! Guy, this world, it's a video game. And the guy responsible for this world was going to destroy it. Terminate him. We can save our world. But we have to fight together. There is this very popular, I I guess you could kind of call it an MMO, like a massive multiplayer online game called Free City. And of course, it's a huge game. Everyone loves playing it. But in Free City are a lot of these um, NPCs, these uh, non-playable characters, which like we see them in in games that we normally uh, would play, of like these background characters. They don't have any like important thing to do other than to kind of add to the atmosphere or or level that, that you're playing. One of these NPCs in Free City is um, a bank teller named Guy, played by yours truly, uh, Ryan Yours Reynolds. truly. <laughs> That's right, by me. Yep, I am. Uh, it's Ryan Reynolds, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> is played by Ryan Reynolds, not by me, unfortunately. So anyways, um, and one day he kind of gets sick of his routine and he decides to actually try and do something a bit dangerous, something that kind of goes against what NPCs are normally known to do. And when he does this, he kind of starts realizing that there's a little bit more to this game than just what he thought there was. So, of course, that sends him uh, on an adventure, and he's going to meet all these cool characters, uh, some that are NPCs that are just part of the game, and others that are uh, actual people playing these video game characters. And a lot of the people that are uh, actually playing this game and watching news reports and whatnot are wondering, what's going on with this NPC that seems to be going rogue? And and from there, you have this uh, this big big exciting video game movie i liked this movie but i guess it feels too much or it feels a lot like a lot of other movies that i've seen now i don't think that has anything to do with like the movie having been delayed four times i think just Mm. even if this had come out at its original intended release date it still would have felt like other movies i've already seen yeah it's so funny i was trying to figure out the same thing too average joe how like by the time the movie ended I was like, that was really entertaining. That was fun. That was exciting enough. There were a number of like fun references and cameos and all that. Ryan Reynolds like has really made a career out of being charismatic and funny and all that. Like seeing him in this movie, he it's not terribly different from like other roles we've seen him in, but he still makes it work. He's still a, a joy to watch. But by the end of the movie, I was kind of wondering the same thing. And it's like, I, I thought I would have really liked this movie more than I did. I still think it's good. I still think it's worth seeing. But if I had to guess, I think it has something to do with the fact that, like you say, it does remind me of a lot of other movies. And to be fair, I think you can kind of say that about most movies that come out nowadays because they are inspired by something else. They're connected to something else. They're trying to be something else. And you look at it and you're like, oh yeah, that just reminds me of like a a watered down version or a discount version of Star Wars or of Marvel or whatnot. But I do think the reason why maybe this one didn't 
um, excite me as much as uh, uh, certain other movies is that, to me, I feel like if you had a magical blender and you put in Ready Player One, something I'm pretty familiar with, um, a dash of Black Mirror, not too much, but a dash, like that kind of idea of like these um, cookies, if you will, these these this artificial intelligence that's not an actual person but but acts like a person. Uh, you have a bit of that. You have a bit of the Truman Show, a bit of um, time loop movies. Like it reminded me a bit of like both Edge of Tomorrow and Happy Death Day because it does kind of have that element. I feel like if you mix that all up and, and put in a little bit of originality, you have Free Guy. And Free Guy still has a few beats, still has a few moments that I really liked. And I thought this is a good moment because it it, it is being able to differentiate itself from all these other movies that I'm familiar with. But there are just, I think, too many moments where I am just reminded of another movie, which I guess is not a bad thing per se. Maybe it kind of is, but I think it kind of prevents the movie from being really good or really great. Yeah, I think the big, like you say, a dash of The Truman Show. I'm like, this feels a lot like The Truman (laughs) Show. Okay, yeah, yeah, it does. (laughs) But then the guy I saw with, he said, oh, it made me really think of the Lego movie. And I was like, oh, wow, the Lego movie is a lot like The Truman Show. (laughs) Yeah, that's true, actually. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I never made that connection initially. Yep, everything is awesome. (laughs) But yeah, so like, it's like The Truman Show or the Lego movie because it talks about this guy living the same kind of routine life that is... Mm -hmm. You know, for very like it's different in every movie, but there's a there's a reason why this person's forced to live a routine life. Yeah. And once they break the mold of like what they're supposed to be doing, that's where the adventure comes from. Yes, absolutely. Uh, from a video game perspective, like I've heard people compare it to like even Wreck It Ralph. Yep. Like that's kind of the <laughs> the same thing, and that's literally about a, a video game character in the same respect. Or even the new Jumanji movies and how like those yeah that's true I hadn't even play with yet. Yeah. video games and like the avatars of you know different people and the like you know there's that guy welcome to Jumanji like he is yeah. clearly a non-player character right. in the that's same right. way that these uh, citizens of Free City are supposed to be mm-hmm. yep um it, yeah no it, it and it's funny like yeah the, I, I just feel like the more you go on like it's hard to not connect it to other movies and I think it's because. And I think that's kind of the difficult thing that I think a lot of movies face nowadays is that unless you're making an experimental film, if you're doing something pretty mainstream, you are definitely going to be borrowing a fair amount uh, from from pop culture and from other movies and whatnot. But but like I said, I, I do think one of the strengths of the movie, which I'll get into more detail when we get into the spoiler zone, spoiler verse, is that I do think the two human characters, the girl that is playing the Molotov girl, and then the other guy that is the um, working at the uh, Free City offices. I think their relationship and the way they play into the movie, I think, is the one thing that actually makes it feel a little a little different um, from other movies. And I can't go into too much detail now, but there are moments where they're talking, where they have a problem, where they're trying to figure something out. And I felt in a lot of those moments, I thought they were handled quite well because it felt like we were able to stray away from the path of, you know, video game character in the video game world is trying to do this and the bad guys don't like it. So there's all this uh, carnage and mayhem. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think it's still the mark of a pretty good movie that even when you are borrowing from so many different sources, from so many different stories, that I like to think there's still a way that you can... Um, turn it into something that can still be enjoyable because I'll be honest, like a lot of, I've seen a lot of enjoyable movies, excuse me, over the last couple of years that remind me that that don't feel all that original, but there's still something. Joker. <coughs> Sorry. I cough. Which would be, but yeah, even something like Joker, which I still think is an awesome movie still very much reminds me of, yeah, like a mix of like taxi driver and the King of comedy. But yeah, I think it still goes to show there's a lot of good you can do in a story that may not be the most uh, unique, but it's still a fun idea, right? I mean, to still have a bank teller and NPC be the one to uh, actually fight against a an avatar controlled by a human and like all the things that that kind of uh, results in. Like there's still a lot of fun. And yeah, like Ryan Reynolds is like such a likable, funny presence that I think he kind of helps the movie from getting too bland or boring. Yeah, like I, this movie made me laugh. There were lots of yes. funny moments. Like I'm not at all picking on this this one uh-huh. and i think this is just goes to show i've seen a lot of stuff kind of similar to this so this is definitely like in my wheelhouse me too yeah 
whereas perhaps somebody else who hasn't been exposed to these other franchises will think of this as more original. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's an anime I love called Log Horizon, where it's about people stuck in a video game. And for whatever reason, the non-player characters become sentient and all of a sudden they stop just doing the same routine things. They actually start, oh, wow. they actually start like acting like people yep. and they don't trust the players because they're, <laughs> they can tell there's a difference between the players and the people. Mm-hmm. They call them the people of the land. And there's literally a whole story arc in the show about one of the people of the land, like an NPC, mm-hmm. like wanting to become a player character. Oh man. And I'm like, this is, this is, this is for the plot of Free Guy. <laughs> yep, free Guy prototype in anime form. Um, but yeah, so it, you're right. Like, it's original enough. Like this idea of this guy who's like, oh, isn't this all great and happy? Kind of like Emmett from the Lego movie, yep. except instead of just a city where everything is awesome, literally there's explosions and tanks and yeah. bank robberies every day. And everyone's like, there is a lot of comedy. Like, oh yeah, like this is, this is another Monday. <laughs> Yeah. There's a lot of visual humor kind of hanging out in the background mm-hmm. of a lot of scenes, like funny Absolutely. misspellings of things and, yep. you know, just, oh, like, I have no idea what that person's doing, but it's, <laughs> it's certainly something. Yeah, exactly. And and that certainly is a benefit that Free Guy has over something like Wreck-It Ralph or, or even, like I said, like the Lego movie. It has its own unique take on this idea of an everyman breaking out of the mold of what is perceived yep. to be a routine life. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I really liked uh, Buddy, <laughs> the security guard. Yeah, that actor. I can't remember his name, but he was also in the new Space Jam as one of the commentators. Oh, was he? Okay. It, just his line delivery. He reminds me of Kevin Hart, but somehow funnier. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I thought he was fine. I think um, I, I find with characters like him, uh, sometimes they are kind of just demoted to like comic relief and like they would, they need to fill this specific role. Cause I found like there were certain times where like for 30 or 40 minutes of the movie, you don't see him because it's like, Oh, I guess he has nothing to do during, I guess some of the more bigger important scenes, but there is, and I will go into spoilers when the time comes, but there is a scene I really like with him uh, towards the end of the movie where him and guy have to sit down and talk and there's some kind of meaningful words uh, that, that he gives to guys so yeah no i i thought he was fine but uh taika watiti this is our second week in a row talking about know, him yeah. <laughs> yep. he has a much bigger role in this than he does in the suicide squad absolutely yeah. and my goodness he like the way his character dresses the way he acts the way he like if they had another actor deliver those same lines i right. probably would not have laughed as much as i did the way he chose to deliver them he is funny i i, I really I really like Taika Waititi. I, I like him as a director, as a writer, and also like as a performer. I, I think he has, even though there might have been a few jokes that didn't quite land in this movie, I think most of them did. I think most of them were funny. And, and, and I think sometimes what's fun about certain jokes is when they kind of set up something that you kind of catch on to. And, and in a way, it's kind of like a bait and switch, right? Like a, a humorous character will be like, oh, we're going to do this thing. And the audience watches and they're like, I don't think so. I think you're going to do that thing. And then when they get to that moment, it's like he does that thing. I will give this specific example when we get into the spoiler verse. But but yeah, I thought he was really funny with that. He was just like cranked up to 11. They probably just filmed him and just said, do whatever you want there, Taika. And he's like, okay, here we go. And he just went (laughs) crazy and did a whole bunch of stuff. And uh, yeah, I, I thought he was, if he was maybe a bit one note, he was still very funny and entertaining to watch. This movie is directed by Sean Levy, who I know from the Night at the Museum movies, which I love. Uh I found out he's also like one of the directors for Stranger Things, which I know you're a fan of. I am. Absolutely. And he seems to be good at like these kind of like ensemble adventure things. So even Uh though Guy is kind of like the focus here, like there are a lot of characters who like you kind of have to pivot between and share the focus and. Yeah, no, he's been uh, he's been working for a while. Like he's done that. He did the the Pink Panther uh, remake with oh, uh, Steve Martin. He did, uh, yeah, <laughs> he did cheaper by the dozen. But yeah, yeah, it's interesting. He is one of these, um, I guess, roles in the in the film industry where he has been directing and producing for a while. And I mean, I haven't seen his entire filmography or anything like this uh, that. But I, I feel like this might be definitely one of his bigger movies, especially given like the time it's coming out and Ryan Reynolds being the main star and, and whatnot. I mean, the night, Mu- night of the museum movies had some legs because they're there's a trilogy. There's three of them, 
but uh, but yeah, I think this might be his, his biggest movie after having uh, seen it. So yeah, he's been doing this for a while. And uh, yes, I did look up and saw that he was uh, part of Stranger Things. And, and that's where I've seen his name eight times, I think. I think he's done eight uh, episodes uh, for the last three seasons. So as we mentioned, there are some specific callbacks and references to actual video games. Mm-hmm. But then they also do the legwork of kind of creating all their original yeah. kind of branded references. So it feels enough. It feels like they kind of did the Wreck-It Ralph thing where they like they make references to real brands, but then they kind of focus on the ones they've invented, which yeah. is kind of natural, I think. But it's yeah, good sure. to at least acknowledge that these other brands exist mm-hmm. as opposed to just making up. I hate it when they make up all original brands for a movie. Yeah. And to my surprise, there's actually like several real YouTubers in this. Yeah, that's right. Jack Septica is a guy like I, I know very little about, but my brother used to watch him a couple years ago. And when I saw him pop up, I was like, top of the morning to you, laddie. I was like, I know who that guy is. Uh, yeah. So yeah, lots of, uh, yeah, good amount of cameos for sure. Yeah. And again, it kind of, it contributes to this feeling like, oh yeah, this is real. Like there's mm-hmm. IGN is in this, like IG, there yeah. people are being interviewed by IGN in this movie. I'm like, oh, that makes this feel real in a way yes. because it, IGN would totally be interviewing people out of the video game thing. And I'd like to consider this next thing not a spoiler technically because it is shown in one of the trailers. And it's not like this cameo is like part of it. Like it's literally just something that's shown briefly. But um, Alex Trebek, uh, I think this was his last cameo. Um, Like this is one of the last things we'll see him in was in this movie because they do have a a brief clip of of Jeopardy. And uh, yeah, I just it was like it was so nice to see him. But yeah, kind of hurt a little bit because he's no longer with us, unfortunately. Yeah, that was probably the one time where I'm like, oh, yeah, this this movie's been sitting on the yeah. shelf for a while. Because <laughs> exactly. I think if this movie had come out when it was originally released, he would have still been alive. Like, he only died yes. earlier this year. That's right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it was kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah. Good old pandemic making movies sit on the shelf. Exactly, yeah. But my brother, King Boo, I was speaking to him before this. Everyone might remember King Boo. He's been on the podcast a couple of times. He mm-hmm. saw the movie. He's loved it, and he's much more of a gamer than I am. He loved mm-hmm. all the references. He didn't feel like it was pandering to video game audiences, and he loved the fact that there were all the YouTubers involved. So mm-hmm. he gets a big – I think he gave it 3.8 out of 4 back. He's oh, wow. like he, – he absolutely loved high. it. Uh, but to hear more on what we think of the movie, you're going to have to skip around outside of the spoiler-verse. Mm-hmm. If you need any more convincing to see the movie, I would say if you haven't been to the movies yet since theaters have reopened – and you're just looking for a fun time and it's one that you can take more people to that because it's not r-rated then i would say yeah go see free guy yes absolutely but if you need more convincing we're gonna go inside the spoiler verse now to spoil Mm -hmm. the movie there'll be a time code in the show notes to allow you to skip around this if you want to hear our final thoughts Mm -hmm. but we are now inside the spoiler verse oh this is nice yeah, it's so nice and cozy in the spoiler first. Oh, it is. Just to talk about whatever. I love it. I was going to bring up the Alex Trebek thing here because I'm like... Yeah. <laughs> it is It is in the trailer, So, it, it, but it, I was like, are there other things... Like, it was the only thing that I noticed from like, oh yeah, this movie was made a while ago. But was there anything else for you that made the movie feel dated? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think just that, because yeah, like you say, I think if it came out when it was supposed to, I think, yeah, he definitely would have been alive. So it's interesting to add that cameo now has a bit of a bittersweet feeling to it because, um, the movie had to be delayed. And by the time it came out, he had passed away. So I think that was the only one I caught. I don't know if you felt this, but when I was watching the movie, it felt like there was a lot of audio that didn't match the lip flaps like to me it felt like there were a lot of scenes where there was like adr done like in post to like i guess the line didn't come out right or they maybe they changed the script a bit it just Mm. felt to me maybe i was like i don't know out to lunch but it felt like there was a lot and this probably has something to do with how the film was edited Mm -hmm. but it just felt like there were a lot of scenes where what people were saying didn't match what their mouths were saying yeah it is actually funny you mentioned that i I don't recall seeing many examples of it but but there were a few points actually and it's funny you watch so many movies where normally what you are hearing is either what was recorded on set or very accurate adr so that it 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 still kind of creates that illusion that like oh yeah that's just what they said on set and then they just sync to the video and the audio and boom you're good to go but yes i do actually recall seeing a few moments where i was like yeah i don't know if that exactly lined up so yes i think i caught maybe like two or three moments of that 
which leads me to believe they probably did like lots of editing to this movie in the mm-hmm. year they basically had to play around with it but it didn't feel like 2016 suicide squad no. kind of like lots of it, it felt fairly cohesive aside from the awkward dubbing in certain parts yeah no absolutely and uh something that i'd like to bring up uh that's spoilery a uh, pretty big spoiler when it comes to cameos and moments and whatnot but uh, but there's also kind of something extra to it that I, I really appreciated. So the moment where um, Guy is fighting dude, <laughs> like that Guy is fighting this, this bigger, more muscular version, I guess, of himself that's not complete. And let's be fair, like that was really funny that he he's like, I'm going to do three things to you. I'm going to, you know, kick your butt. Second thing, last thing, and like all these things are not complete because they didn't finish the character on time. So I thought that was funny. But the moment where they're fighting and Guy uses Captain America's shields and then we get a brief shot of Chris Evans going like, what the S-H-I-T? Um, seeing that and then seeing him kind of bring up the whole hand behind the shield. On top of that being just like a really fun, nerdy moment, I really liked it. And the Avengers music. <laughs> and the Avengers music, that's right. And then like a minute later, he's pulling out a lightsaber and we're hearing Star Wars. And <laughs> it's just like, talk nerdy to me, movie, you can do it. <laughs> um, I think the great thing about those two moments, especially the first one, is that, like I said, there were only 40 or 50 people inside my theater. There weren't a lot of us. The moment th- that first thing happened with the Captain America shield, Chris Evans, the, uh, the Hulk hand, my audience erupted into cheers and applause wow. and i think what's really great about that is that a it kind of reminds me of the normalcy of what it used to be like to go see a movie like i mean i know like people were losing their minds during the last hour of endgame i was too <laughs> it, it, internally but it like it's, it's it's so much fun to kind of watch those theater reactions of people like freaking out when you know all the avengers sorry slight spoiler for another movie <laughs> are all coming together for the final battle but uh i think it was just nice because i think it goes to show that there's still that excitement of wanting to go see a movie and and Mm. sometimes like there are really fun reactions because people laughed throughout this movie a lot at at all the right spots which i i think was great but i think that moment to hear people cheers and applause it was like for five seconds it kind of reminded me of like what it might have been like to see this movie in 2019 um during during normal times so on top of that moment being really great just the way people reacted to it really kind of like tugged at my heartstrings oddly enough because it's like yes this is why i like going to the theaters because you you wouldn't get that same kind of thing at home yeah i mean i mean initially afterwards i was like yeah like as if chris evans would be watching this live stream <laughs> video game thing yeah, in cafe exactly. <laughs> on his phone mm-hmm. but i was like happy to have that moment in there and i was also like well this is why this is what we get now that exactly. disney owns all these things we can get more sharing of resources yeah. Even just to see Ryan Reynolds hold the shield, I was like, "This yeah. is cool" because like he's that he's been Marvel awesome. adjacent for a while. But to, exactly, and then to have that immediately followed up with, I'm like, "Why don't you keep the shield and the lightsaber?" Like I would have held. Yeah. Oh man, things. that would have been awesome. That's a great idea. That is such a great idea. I want to see director's cut where he's like, uh, "So I, that, that was great. Those are probably honestly like the highlight." And then Chris Evans cameo. I think that I think as sad as it is, like that was probably the, my favorite part of the movie, just because I, you know, obviously I'm a Marvel person. Yes. I really enjoyed the love story. Yes. I, I think that the whole explanation for, so in the movie, they explain that guy was coded with essentially this artificial intelligence, which was connected to this code that the, the there's like these two programmers who mm-hmm. wanted to make their own game and it got bought out. And it's yes. kind of like a big thrust of the movie is they got to get their code back. Mm-hmm. And I like how, they kind of explained that the source of his AI is this kind of pre-programmed essentially love that the one guy programmer had for the female programmer. Yeah. And like it, this is, it's, uh, I thought it was very great because on one hand it explains like a, hey, why is this one guy different from everyone else in free city? But then too, it's like also why did he all of a sudden decide to break, break his programming? Yes. And, and, and I agree. I would say earlier when I was mentioning how like, there's a certain part of Free Guy that does not feel like those other movies. Um, I would say the the love story, these two programmers that had something good kind of parted ways. And the fact that like one of them, Millie, is very much against Antoine. And, and the fact that it's like you stole our video game and I have to get back at you to, to get the video game. And that the other guy 
he didn't just go AWOL. Like he's working for the bad guy. I think there was a lot of good stuff that came out of there and, and also good meaning too, right? I think that's sometimes what some of these big mainstream blockbuster movies kind of lack is a sense of, a sense of depth or meaning, right? You know, like I, I find a common thing, a, a common cop out is like, oh, character at the beginning of the movie gets killed five minutes in and it's like, you should care about me. You should be sad. Well, why is that? because I'm, I'm a great character, you know, like it, I feel like sometimes they don't, they, it, it, they kind of do it lazily. I feel like you kind of need to earn it. And I think that's actually one of the strengths of this movie is that not only do you have this kind of interesting scenario of Millie's uh, of Millie kind of falling for this NPC who has artificial intelligence, but the way that kind of develops in the way that keys um, also uh, an actor who uh, is from stranger things who plays Steve Harrington, how he kind of explains a bit of the origins about like how he programmed this NPC. And as we learn more about it, even though I would argue it's maybe a little bit predictable, you kind of realize as cheesily as Ryan Reynolds character says it, he's like, um, guy is the love letter, but he's I didn't like, think that was cheesy at all. I thought it was nice and heartwarming. It's all okay. It's a little cheesy, but it, but in, in a good way, not, not bad cheesy, but, but it, you know, it, it's kind of like, Oh, you know, it's still, it, it's fine. Anyways. Um, yeah, saying like you you need you need to, to find uh, the author. So even though I kind of saw that coming, I thought it was still kind of a nice way because like let, let's face it, um, like okay here's here's one of my things that I, I wouldn't necessarily say is is a bad thing, but is something that kind of uh, I had questions about. Remember the scene where Millie and Guy are walking by the water. And then he's like, oh, you got to try this bubblegum ice cream, right? And they basically have this nice little date, right? Where they're like, oh, this bubblegum ice cream is so good. And then they go on the swings back and forth, right? And the whole time while this is happening, I'm thinking, well, Guy is enjoying this because Guy is a product of the video game. He's inside the video game. So he's experienced all of this firsthand. Whereas Millie, she's just controlling her avatar, right? So even though it looks like she's like, apparently she's still having a good time, but she's not physically inside the video game. It's not like Ready Player One where everywhere you look, you feel like you're inside the Oasis or the Matrix, where, where you're basically plugged in and you feel like you are physically there. She's just kind of like looking at uh, her monitor like I'm looking at, at mine. And that was kind of one of the things that I, I kind of wish that they maybe addressed was the fact that maybe she could say a line along the lines of, um, this is different for me than it is for you because you're you live in the video game and, and, and I don't but I'm still enjoying like our discussion and this and that. And I think the only way that they kind of really dealt with it is the moment where guy is like, I want to kiss you. And he kisses Millie and it cuts to Millie's monitor. And then it goes to her and she's looking awkward, which got a big laugh out of my audience. And it is funny, but I do kind of wish like if there could have been some sort of acknowledgement earlier on to explain that for Millie, this is very different and not the same for guy, but she's still getting some sort of enjoyment out of it. So I found it kind of odd, but I think I could still kind of, put the pieces of the puzzle together and understand how she would still find enjoyment out of it. Yeah. And you're right. It was kind of predictable. It's like, okay, you can tell that he projected his own feelings yes. into this code, but the way he like phrased it, it's like, yeah, it's like basically like, and I was getting worried. I'm like, Oh no, is Millie going to like have this weird relationship with his video game character? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But then I was really impressed with how after all that guy's like, no, no, like, this is my world. It's not your world. And, you know, I'm just the result of someone else's affection for you. And I, and that the way that that was phrased and you're like, I'm basically a long love letter. I was yeah. like, this is a great way to like wrap things up. They can go their separate ways. And weirdly they cut. Yeah, from exactly. Yeah. Millie and uh, that whatever keys. that guy's name was before they actually see them kiss. Like they're yeah. just about to kiss. And then it cuts. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Come on! We we know what's gonna happen, I guess, right? But uh, yeah, it, I'm 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 glad they did that as opposed to like some weird thing where Millie is is like Keys and Keys is like yes, Millie, <laughs> and she's like I want to go in the video game to be with Guy. <laughs> so I, I like that they were basically. I, I feel like there was a good moral to the story, and I and I think it it, it it's it could have gone really weird, really strange. Like I've just I've seen body. enough things where yeah. somebody falls in love with something that's ai and becomes sentient it's like oh but it's a real boy <laughs> yeah. 
exactly. I feel like Black Mirror has probably done that at, at least once. But uh, and I, I got to give a shout out. A really funny line that that our my audience loved was when Millie's like, "Guy kissed me," and and then Keys is like, "He kissed you? No, that's not possible. There's not a button for that." She's like, "Oh, he found a button." <laughs> That's, a, that's a very, very funny writing. And, and I think the audience seemed to agree with that. Um, but yes, I, I agree. I think that love story could have been so boring and cliched. And I do like that they actually did something pretty interesting with that. I think that's actually kind of like the core strength of this movie that differentiates itself. Because even like you could argue that, uh, you know, the characters being inside like a digital uh, video game talking with each other, that reminded me a little bit of Ready Player One. But there's a lot more going on, a number of different uh, things that help it uh, be its own thing for the love story. I want to apologize to the people who are in my theater and to the universe. I laughed when they made the comment about gun violence. Yes. That in was... the moments I, th- I could see it coming. Cause I was like, Oh, like they're going to talk about guns. It- it's not the it, it's a scene where they're like oh like the real yeah. world doesn't have bombs and bank robberies That's every right, day yeah, and it doesn't have this thing and then like and there's not gun violence and mm-hmm. i was like oh no and then she's like actually it is a real problem and then i laughed and nobody else in my theater laughed and then immediately i felt regret i'm like oh gosh actually if i think for the last year and a half that's it's actually very like it's not something I should be laughing about. So if any of the people who were in my theater today are listening to this, uh, I apologize. And to everyone else listening, I, I don't think gun violence is funny. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I was just on a giggle high from the from the previous jokes. Yeah, but but I mean, in your defense though, because because yeah, like I mean, let's let's be real. Like even like when I watched Borat's subsequent movie film earlier this year, there were a number of funny jokes that were just as maybe bad as that joke, if not more offensive, that I still found kind of funny. And, and, and I'm not saying that like, oh, all offensive jokes get a pass. But I think to be fair, the joke had really good um, delivery, right? It's the whole, you establish two for a pattern and the third one breaks it, right? So like, we don't have bombings going off um, or we don't have like car chases going off every day. Yeah, that's right. We don't. We don't have bank robbers going every day. Nope. We don't have gun violence. And, and I think I think what's funny is like, it, it, it is a good delivery. Um, I think it is a good a lead up to that joke. I think like uh, my audience laughed at it, no doubt. And I also think that um, obviously, yes, gun violence is not a funny thing, but, but you know how sometimes like we have such a thing as dark humor, right? We will sometimes laugh about certain things that are maybe not funny, but sometimes it's a way to kind of diffuse the situation to kind of just do something that does make us laugh a little bit, a little bit, even if it's something that is not um, inherently funny. Because, yeah, like, I would say, like, that is a funny joke, even if it is a bit problematic because of uh, the problem with, gu- with gun violence nowadays. But uh, I, I, I get you, though. Average show. I understand. Now, you wanted to talk about Buddy and Guy? Oh, yeah. I was going to say um, I really liked Buddy's moments. Like, we're fine and all that. He had a couple laughs here or there. But I really, really liked the moment where Guy is dealing with also another moment that I thought was really good where like they have to tell guy that oh um you're, you're an NPC you're not a real person right and I think him kind of dealing uh with that just defeat of him kind of believing that this was all a lie that to him and that he's being watched and all that I love how even if it kind of this problem resolves itself quickly I really like how he's sitting down and and, and talking with uh buddy about like you know what if it he realized that all this wasn't real. Like it, it didn't matter. And if I remember correctly, I think buddy says something along the lines of like, whatever the case may be, like, we're still here. Let's enjoy it. Let's do something that even though he was a background character, even though he's a video game character, now, now that he, he realizes it, um, that they still kind of were able to do something. They were still able to kind of uh, contribute something positive. And I thought that was a, a really nice moment for him you know, if he's his best friend, let's see what he does when his friend is in emotional turmoil or mental term- turmoil. And I think Buddy, yeah, kind of had a, re- a really nice moment there. And then, of course, proceeds to to help Guy out in his uh, quest in, in the last uh, 30, 40 minutes of the movie. So I think that was my favorite Buddy moment. There, there was like one plot hole that I didn't really understand. Okay. I couldn't understand, like, towards the finale, they're, they're trying to, like, live stream all this footage so that they can show the world that 
the game that they created is actually within Free City. Mm-hmm. But then once all the player characters get removed, it's just the NPCs, and you see uh, Keys, he's live streaming from his laptop yeah. guy. And right. I'm like, how does it work? How could a person live stream an NPC's view from inside a game, and how does the camera follow like an NPC? I, I'm like, I, I don't know much about live streaming video games, but I feel like mm. it doesn't work like that. Yeah, I think there are definitely some like um, creative liabilities you got to take, right? Because if they sat down, let's say maybe they had like a video game expert or someone who's like really experienced with like playing video games. And they're like, hey, can you, if you're not playing the game, can you somehow get into the game and live stream an NPC character? Even if they were like, no, nah, you really can't do that. You know, are they just going to say, well, I guess we have to just change the whole story because we can't do this last part. Like they, they, they still, yeah, sometimes there are kind of like um, deliberate mistakes or what I like, I, I like to call them where like, is it a bit of a plot hole? Is it something that could never happen? Um, uh, probably, but be that as it may, we still want to see this exciting conclusion. And, and I do think Keyes' character is someone who is tech savvy. So maybe because he works for the for the free city game that maybe there is maybe there is a way maybe he has a little digital key or something like that that he's able to get through a little door and he's like haha now i can live stream this maybe coming around to final thoughts we are outside of the spoiler verse as i said before we ran in the spoiler verse my brother king boo loved this movie Mm -hmm. he gave it high praise i think as we've talked more about it i've convinced myself that while it reminds me of a lot of other movies, even other video game movies, this unique blender, like this unique smoothie that is Free Guy, like, yes, it has flavors of Lego Movie, Truman Show, Log Horizon. Like, it tastes like a lot of things I've enjoyed before. But you know what? I enjoyed all those things. Mm-hmm. So in theory, I should enjoy them all together. And I just have to kind of get over that sense of familiarity that I have with those other properties. But on the whole... It was a good time. It made me laugh. And it was engaging. And there is at least one element of the story that is unique and kind of took me by surprise. So I got to give her props to that. So I'll give Free Guy 3.2 out of four bat cookies. Cool. I think Free Guy, um, I think a lot of the success of the movie comes from certain story beats, certain things uh that are different enough from these familiar properties that we've seen before um i I think that helps the movie be entertaining i think ryan reynolds um the more i watch him the more i find him just a very likable and entertaining uh presence so i think he definitely kind of carries the movie on his shoulders because what's the one thing that a lot of the movies we just mentioned um that are like Free Guy, but like what's one of the things they don't have? They don't have Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Free Guy does. And I think that kind of helps the movie um, be just a, a lot of fun. And and yes, I was hoping for this movie to be great. And while I don't think it's necessarily great, I still think it's good. I still think it's funny. It's heartwarming. It's exciting. There's still a lot of fun references and things that they do. I still had a good time. And especially watching it with the audience that I got to sit with. Uh, that also made the experience all the more enjoyable. I will give Free Guy three out of four bat jar cookies. Wow, I thought you were going to go higher than me, but... Yeah, I guess not. <laughs> there you go. So Free Guy is now in theaters, and it is an only theaters release. So That's if right. you want to see it, you got to go out to the movie theater. So uh-huh. if you're in Canada, join Cine Club like me. Yes. <laughs> you get at least one free movie air quotes around free yep because you're paying for it if you want to reach the show you can send us an email at batjarpodcast at gmail.com or you can tweet us at the bat cookie jar you can find the bat jar podcast wherever you listen to podcasts including youtube because we got a channel share our posts on facebook write reviews give our shows a rating this will help all people join us inside the bat jar and we appreciate it dearly this is normally we would go inside the bat jar pull out a topic for next time but since Beef Pork Gribs and Mjolnir are still on baby duty and I'm mm. going to be visiting my family next week, and I think we're actually going to take a week off here. Okay. The uh, Paw Patrol movie oh. <laughs> is coming out this next weekend. Please don't make me see the Paw Patrol movie. <laughs> <laughs> Please. I almost kind of want to cover it, to be honest, because I have thoughts about the Paw Patrol universe. And our 
our episode on Transformers Rescue Bots is like the most downloaded episode oh, we've ever had. That's so I don't true. Know if, okay. I don't know if there's a, <laughs> you know, so we'll, we'll, uh, I guess we can pull something out of the jar and keep it on retainer. So let me just, okay. Let's get the jar here. So yeah, there'll be no new episode next week. And, uh, okay, here we go. Oh, here. We're recording on video now, so maybe, yeah. Ben Movie Buff, can you confirm that I am indeed putting my hand inside the bat jar? I can confirm that you are doing that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to put this up to the camera. You tell the people what it is. Uh, oh, my can. goodness. It's my jam. George, George, George of the jungle, <laughs> friend to you and me. Uh, watch out for that tree (laughs) oh man is is this the brendan fraser movie or the original (laughs) tv show from like the 60s or or anything Um, george of the jungle (laughs) i i think this was uh, written in by a listener who wanted us to talk explicitly about the movie amazing good call um so yeah so we'll take a week off and when we come back it'll either be george of the jungle or the paw patrol movie who knows we'll keep you guys guessing you Mm -hmm. know um but of course we want to thank ben the movie buff for being here with us once again today filling in when beef pork ribs is off on baby duty which of course you're familiar with as a parent i am yes it's uh i'm sure they're either things are going very well and their baby is sleeping at night and everything's okay or it's just complete anarchy some sometimes maybe something in the middle but uh, yes i i know what it's like so i hope i hope you guys are doing okay if uh, you're listening to this and so happy for you guys well i asked him how the first couple of days went and he said honestly it's kind of a blur so <laughs> yes, i feel like it, that it could go either like way that. yep that's right it's just like what the heck happened these last couple of days it's like <laughs> So come back to the Batchar podcast in two weeks when we talk about either George of the Jungle or Paw Patrol. <laughs> oh, man. One of those two. And until that time, I'm Average Joe. I'm Ben the Movie Buff. Catch you on the flip side. See you in the next one. Bye.